This is Hubble's photo of the Pillars of Creation. Now this is the same target, but almost 10 years later. Advance in technology and learning from mistakes is what makes progress. Here is another example, M100. Oh, and another one. This beautiful nebula taken five years apart. Let's flash back to one year ago. We were just discovering astrophotography and our deep space images were blurry and noisy. Although they were low quality, we were proud of them and amazed that we could travel so far with just a camera lens. Now, fast forward to the present. You have joined us and have seen the unveiling of our own Messier catalog table. Follow us as we show you the journey we've taken to shoot the clear and beautiful images that have changed our lives. Alright, so Antoine is currently fixing the car. That way we can continue this and keep, you know, talking and stuff. And I think we're good to go now. On September 11, 2015, we took our first trip to the dark desert sky with nothing more than a pair of binoculars and a little point and shoot camera. That night, we took our very first picture of the stars. In this picture, you can already see a tiny cluster the Pleiades, which after five months of practice and equipment upgrades has become this. Same goes for the famous Orion Nebula, which you can see the progress over time in this collage photo. Tonight, we are doing another transformation, one from our very, very first galaxy captured, Andromeda. So Dahlia just tricked me into switching seats and she just fled. So I'm just walking here alone, waiting for a car to smash me. I'm coming Dahlia. Seriously? This time, once again, we're here at NASA's landing. Uh, we're going to capture the beautiful Andromeda, which is our closest galaxy from us. Uh, about a year ago, we were here at this exact spot. Um, and before we were taking pictures with uh, these binoculars and a really small camera. And our results were a little questionable. They were okay. Yeah, with this, we had those binoculars on this tripod and we're trying really, really hard to just take a picture through here, but um, there was no way. So see the result, that's what I got last time. Last year, um, it's like a tiny blurry dot, disgustingly ugly. <laughs> and then we tried with this camera, the T3i, about two or three weeks later, um, and it was much better. See the result right here? It's still, eh, you know, not that great. So the color was weird and stuff, Quality. but this time uh, we're going to... We're going to test it out with the big guns. Yep, try again with not those little Our things. puny little binoculars, we're going to go get it with the telescope. There we go, let's try. Today we're not capturing one, not two, 
but three galaxies at the same time. I remember how happy and proud I was about my capture. My very first galaxy. My very first other world. You may be surprised, but M31 is actually visible to the naked eye. M31 is approaching us at a very high speed, so our grand, 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 Okay, so we're going to change this lens uh, to a 10 mm lens and we will take a picture like towards this area where M31 is rising and you will see what it looks like through the naked eye, hopefully. Uh, I'll try to make it as close as possible to reality on the editing part. And um, <clears throat> so let's wait for the sun to be completely down and the stars to shine. Do not expect to see it from the city, but if you drive from any major light pollution, you will be able to see it. Let's find her together by taking a quick photo of the whole constellation that lies before us. Here it is. To find M31, we will jump from star to star. For us, Andromeda is the third easiest target to find, just after the Pleiades and Orion Nebula. To find it, you first need to locate this great square which is part of the constellation of Pegasus. Once we have the square, jump from this corner to the next bright star, and then again to the next, even brighter. Then we jump upwards once, then twice. And here we are, Andromeda looking just next to this last star. Let us prove it to you by taking the same photo with a longer exposure. Here she is! Just beautiful. So we had a lot of trouble angling Andromeda. Um, unfortunately, it's just so massive that we can't fit it on screen. But we finally got it to fit perfectly, just diagonally. So we are currently launching it for about four hours now. And uh, after the four hours, we're gonna head on home and continue the editing process to get the end result. Time passed quietly. It was a perfect night. The sky was clear for about four hours until our number one enemy decided to show up. Clouds. Exhausted and sad to not be able to obtain more on our target, we decided to pack up very fast and drive back to the city. One thing to not forget when checking the weather is to not only look at the current day, but also look at the hourly weather for the whole night, as you often image past midnight. Going home after having accomplished your full goal is so satisfying, but driving back to the city after imaging when you haven't fully completed your plan, you're sleepy and tired and just want to go to bed. It's never enjoyable to feel like you missed out on something greater. Getting in the car and taking one last peek at the thousands of stars in the sky, it's disappointing knowing that as soon as you get home, you'll only be able to see a few dozen. Hmm. Tonight though, let's not be sad. Let's be proud. We have a little bit more than four hours, which is more than enough to add this beautiful galaxy to our catalog. M31, surprisingly, is a pretty tricky target to process. This is due to the fact that its size hides most of the black space around it, which makes it difficult for the software to compare the galactic gas into actual space. It took us a few tries, but we finally got the result we liked, and 
Of course, it is much, much better than our last one. What an incredible difference. We feel extremely motivated and ecstatic to continue going where cosmic beauty exists. We hope that our improved endeavors motivate you as well because we could not get better unless we keep falling and trying. At an estimated 12 billion years old, M15 is one of the oldest non-globular clusters. Although clusters are, in general, repetitive and not very exciting, the purpose of Galactic Hunter is to capture them all. The question is, will M15 be the focus of an episode? The Triangulum Galaxy is the third largest galaxy in our local group, right after the Andromeda Galaxy and our Milky Way. M33's fate is even sadder than ours. As Andromeda gets closer to crash with us, M33 will be stuck in M31's gravity, and will have no escape but to get eaten by the new Milkometa. Like the Earth, the planets in the solar system are constantly orbiting our sun. You've probably already seen several of them when looking up at the night sky, but do not realize what they actually are. By getting closer to one of these bright stars, we may actually discover that it is a planet. This is the end of episode 4 of Galactic Hunter. This episode was a lot shorter than usual because once the clouds arrived, we just decided to pack up and leave. Uh, we didn't film what we intended to. Um, if you take a look at our Messier catalog, it has grown a lot more since we take a lot of photo, a lot more photos than you see what is actually in the video. So uh, be sure to check the next target out and choose what our new target is going to be. And uh, thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you next time on Off Series number 2, where you will see all of our equipment in detail. Until then, clear skies.